Hello everybody, this is the week friend. Before we get on to our start of this review, I'm gonna leave off to me in Sweden in about one month from now. Take it away me, one month from now. Well, thanks me from Matera. Uh, yeah, one thing that uh, people immediately is going to associate with this review is of course the movie that Tarantino made 2009. Also glory and glorious bastards with a bit of a weird spelling to it, but forget about that for a second. Now, I actually bought the the DVD of uh, uh, the this version of the Glorious Bastards before um, Tarantino's movie actually came out. And funny thing is that this was released back in what 2004? 2006 maybe, maybe even 2000, 2004. Now the funny thing is that uh, they actually stated on the cover that this was the original be behind Tarantino's upcoming grand movie as it says on the DVD cover. The funny thing about that is that at that point the movie hadn't even started production yet. It was just something that was going to come out and I've always found it kind of funny that if Tarantino's movie that actually was a bit cancelled for for you know a year or two before it was you know back on track again. If Tarantino's movie had never come out, this would have been just a re-release of a uh, Italian war exploitation movie that would basically would have been uh, having the a, a, a grand statement saying that this was connected to a Tarantino movie that doesn't even exist. Hey, fun fact. It was uh, banned by a Swedish uh, censorship twice, but the, the 120 days of Sodom, totally fine. You fucking hypocrites. Oh, yeah, back to me now in Matera. Thanks me from a couple of months I had. So let's take a look at the inglorious authors, shall we? France 1944, even though it's shot in Italy, but shut up about that and uh, let's just enjoy this movie. So we have a bunch of American soldiers and they're being, you know, convicts and they're being executed for various heinous crimes and instead of, you know, taking their punishment, they escape from their captures and they are gonna try to get out of this war and head to neutral Switzerland to try to, you know, survive and all that good stuff. However, the war pulls them back in and uh, because the Nazis have a train loaded with V1 rockets and uh, if that one gets you know to some undisclosed location all hell is going to break loose and maybe the Nazis will win the war or some stuff like that maybe they should redeem themselves maybe they should try to stop the Nazis and maybe they try should try to you know shoot some people and uh, everybody should you know be happy and stuff like that are they gonna do this who's gonna survive now, on the surface, this is not a remake of uh, Tarantino's original movie. This is more of a uh, Italian version of the Dirty Dozen. And if you would compare them, I would actually argue that for a large section of this movie, this, this movie is about as good as the Dirty Dozen. Many people love the Dirty Dozen. I do not. Why? Because it takes hours. Hours, I say for that movie to even show up to work this one however it's all the action all the time and they just you want you want uh, hokey action they got it you want gratuitous nudity they got it you want silly props they got silly props the characters in this movie aren't too important they are you know they are what they are and you very very fast stop caring really about what happens to them and uh, as the longer the movie goes the lesser you start caring about uh, the general, you know, who's gonna get out, who's gonna make it, are they gonna, you know, be able to stop the Germans? But, but it doesn't really matter because the movie is so much fun on its own. It has, uh, it, it is really fast-paced. It is about an hour shorter than the 
uh, Inglorious Bastards by Tarantino, which this movie has no connection to whatsoever. Not a single thing. It's fun to shoot Nazis all day, and I enjoy, you know, people shooting Nazis as, you know, good as anybody else, but when it has gone on for a certain number of times, I get a little bored and I get a little disinterested. That is what happened to this movie. It's not bad. It's a very, very fun, it's very uh, vibrant, it's very entertaining war adventure type of a movie. But then the, the, the finale rolls around and it is so cheap and hokey nonsense that you, it is going to be difficult to not laugh at this one. Because I'm not going to spoil it for you if you're going to see this one, but it is about as, it has about as good production value as the greatest show on earth. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And it is bad. It is bad. It's ugly. It's a bowling shoe ugly. But if you like, like me, a good silly war adventure, this is kind of fun. It's not on the level of Where Eagles There or The Guns of Navarone or Von Ryan's Express or stuff like that. But when it comes to Italian war adventures, it's pretty good. It's pretty fun. It has, a, it, it, has, it has a lot of, you know, hokey charm to it. If you're gonna see one good uh, Italian war adventure, this should probably be it. Sure, the story doesn't make a whole lick of sense. Sure, the characters are a bit nonsense and sure they are not as interesting, but it doesn't always have to be. If you wanna see, you know, American GIs blow up Nazis for, one hours and 40 minutes, it's gonna do the trick. If you're gonna compare this one to, let's say, the Dirty Dozen, the Dirty Dozen has a lot more ethical and uh, difficult questions to ask. This one just asks, do you wanna see some tits and some shit blown up? If the answer is yes, then uh, you'll have a good movie. If you say no, then you'll probably be a lot more happy with the, with, with the Dirty Dozen. And of course, Fred Williamson is always, always fun to see in anything he's in, but I always preferred him in From Dust Alone. I was in Vietnam back in 72. The action sequences, however nice they are, they still get a little repetitive at the time and uh, this movie is uh, all the action and all the uh, sex and all the stupid stuff. Even though sometimes the movie is a little unfocused and they go on these ridiculously silly side quests that sort of exist for no other reason than, hey, we need to pad out the runtime, I suppose. Now, you might think that I think that this movie deserves a slightly lower rating than the 72 I'm going to give it, but I'm going to say that I think this movie is quite fun. I think this movie is very entertaining. I think this movie has a lot of um, hokey 1970s charm to it. I think this movie should be uh, watched at least for the sake of being entertained because it will leave you very, very entertained. This has been so far the hottest day yet. 35 degrees outside and uh, I'll see you next time from so-and-so reviewing, well, such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.